Hi there, join me in this video when I wander around RSPB Coombs Valley. It's about a year now since I came to Coombs Valley last and it's the oldest RSPB reserve in the Midlands. It was opened in 1962 where it was the home to two breeding sparrowhawks. Um, since then it's expanded lots and lots and lots and over 50 years later it's thriving with lots and lots of wildlife. I'm here today to just have a wander around, hopefully I'll see some nice wildlife. You don't know what you're going to see when you come to places like this but I know that I'm going to enjoy my photography. So I've just had a chat with a fellow bird watcher who said that he's been around already this morning and he's seen a red start. No sign of the pied flycatchers which are known to nest here. I did see some of those last year. Hopefully I might get some sightings today. There's also been some warblers sighted this morning. So hopefully if I walk around slowly, keep my eyes open and just don't create too much fuss, I might see some wildlife. So come along with me. I'm pretty sure this is not going to attract any wildlife, but it's good fun anyway. So when you visit a nature reserve like this, it is important to remember that you're never going to see anything if you don't take your time and just wait for the birds to come to you. If you just walk around, especially on gravel paths like this, making lots of noise, the birds will just fly off. I know there's birds about because I've seen some blackbirds and some robins already just um, on the path in front of me. But as soon as you start to get close, they fly off. So you've got to be a little bit more cunning. Stay in one place for a while and just wait for the birds to come to you. If you make a lot of noise, they're just going to go somewhere else. So patience is a real key. So I'm just going to sit on this bench for a little while and see if I see anything. Oh well, time to move on. I've not seen any birds in this location, but it has given me time to sit and think just how lucky I am to be able to do this kind of thing, take some pictures and film videos for you, my subscribers. It really is heartwarming that people take the time to watch my videos and hopefully enjoy them as well. I know by some of the comments I receive that people do enjoy watching the videos and that makes me feel really, really glad that I'm making a little bit of a difference and helping people to enjoy their photography. So I've come a little bit deeper into the reserve and the gravel path is now turned into a dirt path that is turfed over. So it really helps um, disguise my approach to any possible wildlife because it's not crunching the same. Um, I'm not feeling as self-conscious about my footsteps. So if there is any, any birds that I could sneak up on, it's gonna uh, be a bit more beneficial um, because I'm not making as much noise. I'm in the area now where I saw the pied flycatchers last year. So I'm really gonna just take my time, keep my eye out, look for nest boxes because that's where I saw them last year. They were flying in and out of nest boxes and there's quite a lot along this path. So as you can see in this area here, there are lots of nest boxes. I can't imagine number nine gets very, very occupied because it's literally right next to the path. Um, so I'm not gonna look in it because that would be wrong in case there are any occupants. I doubt there are, I can't see any signs of activity, but 
other boxes that are slightly further off the path may have some occupants, so I'll keep my eye out for those. I've got my first decent shot of the day. Um, I'm whispering because the two dunnocks, uh, I think they were dunnocks anyway, um, were on a tree fairly close and you may still be able to hear them. I can certainly hear them. I don't know whether the microphone's picking them up, but they're still fairly close in one of the other trees, but they're just chirping away to each other and they were hopping about and I did manage to get a fairly decent shot of one. I'm just taking this moment to have a bite to eat, but while I do that, if you haven't already done so, you can do me a really big favor by clicking like, subscribe, and the bell notifications. That way you'll stay up to date with all of my future content. Well, I'm not having a great deal of luck so far spotting any birds. I did manage to get those dunnocks earlier, so that's the best so far. But I am starting to descend now from on the top of the valley down into the bottom of the valley. So maybe with a change of scenery, I might stand a chance of seeing something lower down. So I've come down into the bottom of the valley and this river is really attractive and just at the moment the sunlight's coming through the trees and catching the rocks further down the stream um, and just here the river's flowing between these two rocks in a really attractive way so I've done a lens swap and taken the big lens off and put my wide angle on now to make sure that I can get the shot what I've done is I've exposed for the trees in the background which are quite bright because they're in sunlight but then what I also wanted to do, because down here, the, the river itself is more in shade and I want to try and smooth the water out, I've slowed the shutter speed down here so the water becomes a little bit more milky and then I will compose and combine the two when I get back in the computer. A short while ago I came into this clearing just here and it's a beautiful spot but as I walked in I spied a nut hatch, a pied flycatcher and while I've been sitting here I've seen a woodpecker off in the distance as well but I decided to sit down against this tree and since I've done that I've seen nothing for about 15 minutes. Now I'm starting to wonder whether my blue t-shirt is not doing me any favours today because I've sat completely still for 15 minutes and none of the birds that I saw as I walked in have returned. So the only thing I can think of is the lack of camouflage is really doing me a disservice today. Not having much luck today. I've just seen a family of long-tailed tits in the top of a tree. Um, I tried to get a shot, didn't really get a very good one. This is the best one I managed to get. I've just seen a blue tit and photographed it, and the blue tit had a caterpillar in its mouth as a bonus. Now, it might not be the most exotic species, but getting pictures out in the wild like this of any bird is still an achievement, so I'm pleased with that one. i 
just had a chat with another bird watcher and he seems to think that the bird count is a long way down on what it was this time last year. Last year he said he saw lots of red starts that were perching on tops of bits of grass and in trees and this year he's not seen anywhere near as many. And so it may not just be down to my blue t-shirt today, it might just be that the bird count is just particularly down at the moment. I can try again though in another week or so um, because he's given me some tips of where he thinks are some pied flycatchers that are nesting still. If you're interested in bird watching, then I'd highly recommend becoming a member of the RSPB. That's the Royal Society for the Protection of Birds. I became a member quite a number of years ago now, and they do a really great job helping to keep places like this up and running. As part of your membership, you get several complimentary passes to reserves. You also get a magazine every few months, and I haven't had to pay this morning for car parking. So there's lots of perks, but your membership, more than anything, helps to keep these places open. I've had a brilliant morning today. I've seen lots of species. Maybe the photography hasn't quite lived up to the morning that I've had. Um, I haven't got any really spectacular shots, but that's the way it goes sometimes in wildlife photography. I've seen lots of species. I've got some good tips from fellow bird watchers and I can put those to use in future videos. I have learned quite a bit today. I think firstly, the next time I come out, I'll invest in a camo t-shirt so I'm not quite so conspicuous. It's definitely much better uh, when the path is more natural and it's not as crunchy. The birds don't seem to be as scared off quite as much. Um, and I think obviously I've got the downside of having a vlogging camera and a tripod and a big camera as well to carry about. So I've often missed birds because I've had to put all the kit down before I can lift the camera to my eye. So if you go out, you probably won't have that uh, problem unless you're vlogging too. Well, that's all for this video. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, don't forget to leave a comment down below or nip over to my Instagram. That's at the Oakton Photography. You can leave me a comment there and you can see lots of my pictures as well. Don't forget to do me a really big favor by clicking like, subscribe and the bell notifications. Watch out for next week's video. That goes live at four o'clock on Sunday. But all that's left now is to say, stay safe and I'll see you soon. Just how lucky I am to be able to Lucky I am. Oh, the Royal Society for the Protect.